Whisboro Massacre anniversary question. What is your favorite scary movie? What's your favorite scary movie? One generation's tragedy is the next one's joke. What is your favorite scary movie, man? I'll show you. This week marks the anniversary of the infamous Woodsboro murders. Local celebrity victim Sydney Prescott chose to return to her hometown. Welcome home, Sydney. Watch the preview of coming events. What do you want? Who is this? He's trying to do ghost I'm standing in the closet. patterning his murders after the original movie. It's time for someone new to die. The unexpected is the new cliche, and virgins can die now. Does that mean that I'm not going to live as long as these two? Clearly. To be the new version, the killer should be filming the murders. Down! Down behind you! Go ahead if you have the guts. Not to implicate him. You can't kill Sydney. She's victim royalty. Not true. It's expendable. Point taken. Guaranteed third act main cast bloodbath. Fingers crossed on some nudity for a change. Time for your last question. Name the remake of the groundbreaking... Oh, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, the Amityville Horror, Last Christmas, House of West, Mom Night, Night Bloody Valley. Is one of those right? None of the Epa. I'll be right back. I know this one. You're not supposed to say that, are you? <laughs> Should have seen the look on your face. Hey guys, I just got back from seeing Scream 4, the new sequel to Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's um, 90s spoof, uh, slasher spoof trilogy of the same name. Um, just came out this past Friday, April 15, 2011. And this one, of course, was directed by Wes Craven, again, written by Kevin Williamson, who wrote the first two. and supposedly polished by Aaron Kruger who wrote Scream 3 but not really sure about that um, and it stars um, Nev Campbell, David Arquette Court and Courtney Cox from the first three also along with uh, new characters played by Emma Roberts, Rory Culkin, Marley Shelton, Anthony Anderson Eric Knudsen, Hayden Panettiere and Roger Jackson as the killer's voice that we all know and love and um, this one takes place about 10 years after Scream 3 and I'll just read the synopsis off of IMDb uh, Sidney Prescott now the author of a self-help book returns home to Woodsboro, Woodsboro on the last stop of her book tour there she reconnects with Sheriff Dewey and Gail Weathers who are now married as well as their cousin Jill and her aunt Kate uh, I'm not sure if Jill is um, Sydney's cousin or Gail and Dewey's cousin. I think she's Sydney's cousin. But um, yeah, unfortunately, Sydney's appearance also brings about the return of Ghostface, putting Sydney, Gail, and Dewey, along with Jill, her friends, and the whole town of Woodsboro, Woodsboro in danger. <sighs> now, where do I start? Uh, it was pretty good. It was. Um, Better than Scream 3, but not quite as good as the first two. Um, wasn't as scary as I'd hoped, but it had its fair share of creepy, tense, edge of your seat thrills and good jump scares. And um, you know, not as scary as the first two, but a little scarier than Scream 3. Um, I thought that was a little, a little too comedic and not scary enough. Um, like the other screams, it kept me guessing and it wasn't as predictable as I, I expected, having seen the other ones. Um, the opening really, it, it was really clever and kind of caught me by surprise because it had like multiple fake openings from the stab movies within the movie, which were both kind of silly and clever at the same time because 
it kept me it, it kept me on my toes like when you think it'll go one way it kind of throws you a curveball that you didn't expect and you're kind of wondering what's real and what's fake as far as the opening goes and you know I, I didn't really know what to expect next once they threw those curveballs um, and of course the trademark hip and witty dialogue throughout the opening and the rest of the movie is just as good and clever as in the other ones uh, it pokes fun at all the current horror trends and today's pop culture like uh, Facebook, Twitter, video blogging on the internet, um, torture porn, remakes, and other current horror cliches that kind of go, uh, go against the old ones um, to like contradict them. Um, hence, you know, new decade, new rules. Um, and same goes for the whole plot in general which was, you know, kind of predictable in some ways if you've seen the other screen movies and most slashers in general, but, you know, it had a similar, it had similar plot, sorry, similar plot points and cliches from the first one, like um, obvious red herrings, similar scenarios and locations they took place in as far as how the movie played out. Um, but then it kind of puts a new twist on some of those, um, scenarios and cliches that you know you might not expect especially the ending which uh, was kind of predictable at first but then got less and less predictable as it went on and um, you know the killer kind of like as far as who one of the killers were caught me by surprise you know I didn't see it coming at all um, well, I'm reading some notes here um, yeah, the beginning, it started out spoofing the originals, op actually no, I'm sorry, the ending started out spoofing the originals opening and ending, but then what was tacked on after that, um, in a good way, not a bad way, uh, that totally caught me off guard, um, like I said, like I said, especially who the killer was, um, yeah, I wasn't too surprised by who the sidekick was, but the main killer, or, you know, the mastermind, um, you know, I, I didn't see that coming. Um, and overall, the ending was satisfying, you know, went out with a good bang. But um, on the downside, the killer's motive was kind of weak and, you know, petty compared to, like, the other killer's motives from the previous movies, like, um, you know, Billy Loomis and... Stu, I, I don't know what his last name was, but, you know, they, they, they were believable boys, you know, just psychotic movie fans, and then, you know, in the second one, Billy's mother, uh, avenging her son, you know, that seems legit to me, and then, um, in the third one, Sydney's brother, you know, kind of had jealousy issues with, you know, her and her mom, you know, kind of like shutting him out and everything, due to Sydney's mother's sorted pass but um yeah this killer's motive you know it's like as far as who she was in the ooh, I just spoiled some of it uh, as far as who he or she was in relation to Sydney and what his or her beef with Sydney would have been you know it just seemed kind of you know it seems so high school and petty like you know I mean I guess that kind of fits since the characters were in high school but, you know, still at the same time, I was like, come on, really? That's why you're so pissed off at her? Like, seriously, grow up, you know? Just seemed, you know, kind of weak sauce. Um, but other than that, the ending played out pretty good. And um, other minor gripes I had with it, with the movie, was um, some of the dumb character moves was sort of the plot that kind of made things a little predictable and less scary than it could have been. Um, and it had some overly comedic moments that also kind of took away from the scare factor and impact of certain scenes and certain kills. And then, you know, some of the mildly campy voice acting from uh, Roger Jackson who played the killer's voice um, kind of made it a little less creepy than it used to be in parts. But, you know, for the most part, he was, you know, same scary guy as before. Um, 
But, you know, aside from those minor flaws, uh, the movie was pretty good overall and worth checking out. Like I said, better than Scream 3, but not quite as good as the first two, at least in my opinion. Um, that's my review, and I'll talk to you guys later.